So what we have here is a digital multimeter that was sent to me free of charge in exchange for this video review from a company called CC. Let's go ahead and crack this box open and see what we have. As you can see from looking at it, it's a pretty nondescript box. Let's see what we have inside. PCBWay is hosting their fourth annual PCB design contest. The contest is focused on two main themes, Internet of Things and Robotics. Project release time is from August 9th through November 30th. Review time is December 1st through December 12th. Results are announced on December 13th. Project submission is easy. Rules are simple with prize pack giveaways. First, second, and third place prizes consist of cash, coupons, and giveaways. There is also a popular design prize and a participation prize. Judges consist of well-known personalities from the makerspace. Get your submission in now for a chance to win. Hopefully I'm going to be able to figure out how to get this thing out of here. Everything seems to be packaged up pretty well. Uh, here is a bag full of probes and such, and we got some batteries, which is nice. Here is the multimeter itself, and it is wrapped in a plastic bag, which is probably something that you would expect. This is a really unique multimeter in that its form factor is quite small. It's almost the size of a phone, just a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker. And let's get this annoying plastic off of here. You can see the ports are in the bottom of the multimeter. It has two buttons on the side for turning on non-contact voltage, selection, turning a light on, power buttons on the top, all pretty standard stuff. If you notice, this does not have a dial because most of its functions are auto-finding and auto-ranging. It comes with an adequate instruction manual. Again, there's no branding on this instruction manual, and I think you may see this multimeter rebadged or rebranded under different vendors. It comes with a thermocouple. I believe that's what this is called. In essence, it's just a uh, temperature probe that you can use to take temperature measurements. We'll go ahead and we'll test that out a little bit later. And then here are the probes. These are pretty standard probes that you would find on any sub $50 multimeter. Oh, by the way, I'll include a link where you can purchase this multimeter below. And they're made out of PVC. I believe that's the material. And uh, they seem like they're going to work well. We'll go ahead and we'll test them out. Let's go ahead and get these batteries installed here. The rubberized case is nice for impact protection and it comes off pretty easily. Now there's a small Phillips head screw here that I'm going to have to undo. And what's nice about this is it actually goes into a brass insert. So you're not screwing the screw into plastic, which is something you sometimes see on cheaper meters. I thought it was pretty cool that this meter came with some uh, batteries. They don't all come like that, but uh, it was definitely a nice thing. And the process for putting these batteries in is pretty straightforward. And voila, here we go. The multimeter itself is on. This is a selection button that allows me to swap between modes. A long press will turn on the non-contact voltage. At the top, I have a hold button as well as a backlight feature. The meter also has a flashlight on the front of it, so if you're working in dark areas, which is pretty handy. It's the power button at the top. Let's do some tests and see what we, what we have. So because you plug your, your cables into the bottom of this, um, there's no bail. Right, so you can't tilt it up and then work with the multimeter in a tilt-up fashion like you can with this one, for example. Um, it's not a big deal, but it is something that I did want to point out. So you turn this on with the power button on the top. And when it comes on, you're in this auto-sensing mode where it detects the things that you want to measure, which is pretty handy. It removes some of these controls that folks find confusing at times. Um, it makes the use of the multimeter simpler. Now, if you are an older school type person, perhaps you like the manual controls, perhaps you don't. So that's a choice or decision that you would have to make. Okay, so here we have both meters on. 
And what we are going to do are some voltage and amperage tests, and we're going to compare these two meters. Um, so I have them connected to my DC power supply, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply one volt to both of these meters. Okay, so here you can see one volt on the CC and 0.998 on the unit. Let's go ahead and slowly increment that up. And you can see that they are moving in concert. And we'll stop right now at 4.0 volts. And then you can see both are within specification. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is the CC meter is a 6,000 count meter. And you may ask yourself, what does that mean? Basically, it means that it cannot count above the number 6,000. So as we turn up our voltage and we get to 6,000, what you're going to see is his resolution will drop a digit. So now it's back at 629, if you were counting. Um, just wanted to explain that and hopefully clear up some confusion that may exist. Okay, now we're going to take a look at amperage. And in order to do this, we are going to remove this lead and then we are going to plug it in on the side. And then we're going to use our power supply to deliver in amperage. Right now, I have it at 0.5 amps or 50 milliamps. And then I can go ahead and I can adjust that to turn it up. Let's go ahead and do that. And then here you can see that increasing. It should be at 0.2 amps or 200 milliamps. Let's keep going. We'll stop at 0.5. There we go. Now that is within specification. And let's go ahead and go a little bit higher. Here I get an alert uh, letting me know that I'm starting to measure higher amperage, which is pretty handy. All right. So here I have the CCMT2101, and it is connected to this NANG AN8008. The reason we're using this NANG8008 is that it has a frequency output. This is set to auto, so it will detect what we're trying to measure. Right now it's doing a resistance measurement because this meter is not on. So let's go ahead and turn this on. You can see it auto detecting. And what we have here is an AC voltage of 1.533, give or take volts. And here it is saying that we have a 50 hertz signal. Let me turn the light on. Okay, I like that a little bit better with the lights on. All right, so what we have here is our 50 hertz signal. This is outputting 50. And now I can select this and I can change it. And as you can see, the CC meter adjusts with it. So while this is a simple test, what we're doing is demonstrating the CC's ability to read a frequency. And it looks like it taps out somewhere around 5,000. Okay, we're going to move on to the next test. Here we have the temperature probe hooked up, and we are set to Fahrenheit, because that's the measure that I use. So I can take this probe and I can to it should see our temperature start to go up and we do and it is about 73 74 is in here so we should see this cool back down but i think that this works just fine okay so here we have a breadboard that i use with some various components installed on it. and i just use that when i play around or test multimeters so here we are on you have to use this select button here to do certain things so first, we're going to test our continuity. And you can see that you can continuity test. One of the things I'll say is that sometimes this holds a little long or it can take a long time. So that is common for auto ranging multimeters for them to take a little bit longer to get a reading in. So if you were working on a PCB and you had to rapidly test continuity across a variety of connection points, it would take you a little bit longer with this than it would a non gene multimeter. We can also measure um, 
diodes. So let's take a quick look at uh, some diode measurements. And you can see the forward voltage, and it's putting out enough juice to light them all, which is fantastic. And then you can also test capacitors or capacitance. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this one real quick. And it should come out. This is actually 10 nanofarads, if I remember. So it is reading a little bit high, but that is not uncommon. And I advanced too far on the selection. I wanted to check the resistance of some of these resistors. But you can continue to cycle through here. Like here's your temperature in, in Celsius, your temperature in Fahrenheit. It takes us back to auto arranging for voltage and amps. And here we are. Let's go ahead. So this is a 220 ohm resistor. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to measure is our non-contact voltage. So I set the device into non-contact voltage mode, and you can see that right here. And I'm just going to bring over this extension cord. And there you can see a meter, and it is alerting. And it's notifying me that there is voltage on this cable. Okay, let's crack this thing open and see the insides. All right, well, the first thing that we notice is that these rubber buttons have come off. And I'm sure I can somehow figure out how to get them back in there. But um, these rubber buttons actually actuate these switches. So these are the switches that we were pressing earlier, turning it on or making selections. Let's see what we have down here. This is shrouded. These are inputs. And uh, I would have to take this device down further in order to get a better look. Um, taking a look at the solder job on these connections, it doesn't really look that bad. It looks pretty good. Here are the contact points for your battery. So here's the, the contact points on this side. And if you remember when we took this apart, here are the AAA batteries that are used to power the device. We have a small fuse here, and uh, it just says F1 for fuse one. I'm not sure what it is. There is designations that this is your 10 amp or your current input. It comes up and runs through the shunt. Um, this would be your voltage side, and you can see here is a small PTC or input protection, as well as these two resistors. This would be our main processor here covered up underneath this blob. Um, I don't know what processor that is. Here you can see the LCD controller, and if you look hard enough, you can read the model of that. Your LCD light for illumination. And then this is your non-contact voltage sensors here, these two metal plates. We have a 4 megahertz clock, or crystal, that is used as the clock. And that's about it. I'm not going to take this down any further. I'm tempted to, but I'm not going to. And um, I also wanted to point out one other thing, and it is that the screws for this are going into, they're self-tapping screws that go into plastic. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't think a typical user is going to, oh, here's your speaker. Um, I don't think a typical user is going to be taking this thing apart very often. They might, but uh, I do like to have easier access to the fuse in the event that you need to replace it. And then here's the board number if I can get that up there. And I can't, but folks may want to look this board up. And it looks like this one was built in 2021 on March the 16th, so it's a relatively new. All right, well, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thank you.